Welcome to Talking Giants, presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick, And we have a Seahawks preview podcast. Third year in a row playing the Seahawks. Uh, this has been a matchup that's been, you know, that's become kind of consistent. Because these teams, you know, are the same conference and they finish the same place in the division quite often. Justin, how are you? I'm good, man. Uh, excited that we're going to have... Uh... A watch party in New York City this weekend at Downtown Social. Doors open at 1230 if you want to watch a regular old football with us. But if you're a Giants fan and you just want to watch that, come to New York City, Downtown Social. All the information is available uh, with the link in our description. The ticket the tickets are free. I don't even think you need to get a ticket. If you just even want to just show up at Downtown just Social on ticket. Sunday. So they don't the have to count how many people were there. You could just Yeah, you know what? It, make, it does make us look a little bit better. So I'm excited to see everybody regardless of what this result is going to be. And, you know, I, I, I'm excited anytime the Giants play. I'm excited to see people, but man, it, it feels, uh, this is a tough a little, game, man. The, the leading story is uh, this game doesn't feel fun to begin with, but then also number two, more importantly, it doesn't feel fun when the Giants may probably be without Malik neighbors. Yeah. I guess we can start with the Giants offense because they are most likely going to be without Malik neighbors. You know, he didn't practice on on Thursday, and you know, you have to go through you know steps to get out of concussion protocol, and he hasn't even really started those yet. Uh, before we talk about that, Justin, this episode is brought to you by some special, special people. I'm very appreciative of all these people. We got Mike Spino, Spino, he's got a nice spine. We got Ham Seed. I'm pretty sure hams don't have seeds. Um, and then we did John R last time, but Justin, I appreciate John R doubly. John R are people. Justin, who are these people? Uh, John B. Uh, that show, Edder Banks, is coming back. I hate that show. Um, I watch it anyway. Patreon.com slash Talk of Giants. Strauss Month plus some other tiers. You get to be you get to hang out with us live while we record the shows. Bobby Skinner is sending some stickers in the mail, and there's some monthly shirt raffles. We appreciate everybody on there. Patreon.com slash Talk of Giants. Uh, you'll be glad you did. Absolutely. You'll be glad you did. All right, so it looks like the Giants are going to be without Malik neighbors. And to me, that is not only worrisome just because he's their star player, um, but specifically against the Seahawks defense, which does not give you anything easy. They don't give you the deep attempts. It's like you got to throw over the middle, right? You got, you got to throw between 10 and 20 yards if you really oh. want to have success against the Seahawks defense. And I don't know which receiver... Brian Dable has the confidence to consistently draw those things up for, or Daniel Jones has the confidence to just like, you know what, let's pull the trigger on these type of throws, right? We saw, you know, this game last year, it's a different defense, but like that's what the Seahawks defense has done really well. And Malik Neighbors is the guy who you do that for, right? He's the guy who you design those 10 to 20 yard throws for, and it looks like they're going to be without him. Uh, there are three receivers that have a target share of higher than 29.8% so far this year. Devontae Smith with 29.8, Amon Ross St. Brown with 31.1, and Michael Pittman with 30.2%. The target share for Malik Neighbors, 38.2%. Um, so, I mean, not only, yeah, it's a bad thing that the Giants are missing Malik Neighbors because the Giants are missing Malik Neighbors, but Malik Neighbors just is this passing offense. He And there's, there's like, that's not even close. Like, we're talking about, oh, 30%. I mean, Malik Neighbors is closer to forty percent, having a forty percent target share, than he is to the wide receiver that's in second place in overall target share in the National Football League. Yeah, so like they're gonna have to go back to things they did last year, right? And oh yeah, <laughs> here's here's my wor- worry is that this Seahawks team, this Seahawks defense, they will quote unquote give you the quick game, but they close in on it so quick and tackle, right? Like yeah, this, not this team- was the game last year where well, I'm sorry to cut you off, but this was the game last year. Well, the, a different coaching staff, but you no, know, that's a bad point because this is a different coaching staff. Continue your point. Hey, but they do play in a, at least the game they played last year. They play similar to what they do this year, where it's like, I had to remind myself while watching film that this is a different coaching staff. But they will, you know, they will give you the quick game and they close in on it, right? And that's, you know, they put Devin Witherspoon in the slot and he'll make your life hell. Like, so it's like, yeah, you can get those four yard passes to Wandale, but you're not going to get much more than that. And I just, 
don't think you're going to have consistent success, especially with their offense on the side and the way they're able to put up points. Like, they're going to have that, right? And you're like, okay, well, if they're doing that, you can attack them deep. Nope, right? They have have had five deep throws against them this year, and the only one was completed, Bo Nix in week one. Now, granted, you know, we have to, we do have to talk about like the teams they faced, right? The Lions last week, one, the Giants aren't anywhere near as good as the Lions offense, but they're missing their entire D line. They probably won't have Boyd Moffe or Byron Mur- Murphy in this game, but they get a guy like Fackler. But I'm not, I'm not stressed about their front. Say that again. They'll probably be back, have Leonard Williams back, but I'm not oh, stressed yeah. about their front. Okay. Um, you just stumbled upon Leonard Williams. I thought you intentionally just said his name fast. No. Okay. Um, at one point, was leading the league in QB hits. Continue. They have uh, five, just only five deep throws against them, um, and only completed one. Right, so that's that's insane. Now, here's the thing: you can't really like look at the numbers and judge the Seahawks' defense because, like you said, they're missing their entire front versus the Lions. And the first three games they played against Bo Nix, Jacoby Brissett, and Skylar Thompson. Yeah, yuck. I mean, that's as bad as an awful of a QB run as you can get. But at the same time, like this Giants offense will look a lot different without Malik Neighbor. So it's like, all right, what are, yeah. what are we expecting out of the Giants offense without him? Because he's had so much that target share. So it's kind of a, I don't know game, but I, I just think their defense, man, is structured well and it plays against the weaknesses of Daniel Jones, which is going to be hanging in there and throwing those balls over the middle into windows with anticipation. That is where you can attack them, right? If you run a high low concept, they're going to take, they're going to give you the high. But they're not going to make it easy for you. So you got to be able to pull the trigger and make those tough throws. And they're not going to just give you easy, deep attempts either, right? They're not a team that's just playing man and gives you those opportunities. Like, you better, if you're going to beat us, you got to beat us deep. So they don't do that. So it's just, you got to be on your shit, right? You got to be on your, you, you got to be dialed in. And that leads into interceptions, that leads to hesitation. And that's why I think this is a very tough matchup for this Giants offense. It because is. I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball super well, especially if they don't have Devin Singletary. And you got to be consistently taking the high and the high low concepts. You said this maybe as a joke, but I don't think it's a joke. Think Isaiah Hodgins is going to be activated? I actually think that's not a bad idea. At least, you know, help you in the red zone, right? Because, you know, Jalen Hyatt will, will obviously start. If Malik Neighbors is out there, but Jalen Hyatt, like, this is why I was very happy they kept him on the practice squad is because I think he's one injury away from contributing, and he's two injuries away from being a starter on this team. So yeah, I, c- I can see them doing it. I don't think they're going to give him more than twenty five percent, you know, more than twenty percent of the snaps. Like they're right. going to give those snaps to Hyde in this game. Um, but you know, you're going to need Hyde to. I think Hyatt's going to be the clear out in a lot of this stuff, and Darius Slayton. You know, maybe the guy, like if if they're gonna have someone that wins in that area, it's Darius Slayton. He's really the only guy that you trust to win in that area consistently. So here's my question: this this offense has been so so Malik Neighbors and Wandell Robinson centered. Or I mean, I talked about the target share of Malik Neighbors. Wandell Robinson has a target share of twenty seven point nine percent. I mean, they're and this is from Doug Analytics. The Giants are targeting their top two receivers more often than twenty six teams target their top three receivers. So I just am so curious, forget results base, forget how the Giants are going to put up yards and points. I'm just so interested to see, well, what is, how is Brian Dable going to call this offense? Is it like 11 personnel? Are we going to lean into that with Jalen Hyatt on the field and Robinson in the slot? They like, they like running out of 12 personnel. They've liked putting two tight ends on the field. But are you really so Slayton's going to be one of those wide receivers? Is Wando Robinson going to be the second outside wide receiver and not a guy like Jalen Hyatt? So I'm really curious to see personnel wise where the Giants are going to go this weekend. And I have no clue where they're going to go if Malik Neighbors is not included in that. Well, I, I think we're going to get a lot of well, Wando Robinson stuff. We, and we've already got, I think we're going to get a lot of that. It's just going to be how do they get Slayton and Hyatt involved. But here's my thing. We're talking about like how are they going to play with heavy personnel. Do not get in the heavy personnel against the Seahawks defense. Right? They view that as that's time to attack. Right? This is not a team that uh, blitzes a lot. But that's where they will blitz. They will get their DBs. When you get tight like that, they'll blitz their DBs and they'll look for free sacks. 
right? When you're, you know, they're, you know, you're accounting for the guys in the box that you got to block. And sometimes you leave the backside of that unblocked. We talked about it last year. Hell, DJ had a, I think, a fumble sack in this game last year. But that's, they're going to blitz their DBs and come after you, right? Like they're going to try and speed up the process when you're running two and three man routes. And their DBs are all good run defenders. So you lose some of the advantage there um, from running out of 12 personnel. So, like, there's one thing I would say is do not get heavy in this game. Do not get heavy in this game because it doesn't play to your advantage against the Seahawks defense where they're, all their DBs are good run defenders. They gets where they get the most aggressive out of. Do not get into You got to run some of it, but don't let this be a heavy, heavy 12 personnel game because you don't have Malik neighbors. Like that's to me, that's a bad correction. You know, this is where we talk about, hey, they have some depth at wide receiver. That's a good place to be. Also, something I've noticed about the Seahawks defense. Scramble to throw, right? If there was any game where I was like saying, hey, don't be afraid to escape the pocket a little bit because their defenders are aggressive out of that, right? So, like, if I'm running a drill for the Giants' def- offense this week in practice, I am a scramble drill. Find the hole, find the hole for the defense, right? So, like, you got to keep your head on a swivel as tight ends and wide receivers because – there's an ability, like I've, I've, they've given up a lot of yards that way on the scramble to throw drills. So yeah. um, this isn't like some world-beating Seahawks defense. I think it's really good. I think they're sound fundamentally. Um, Mike McDonald's a good coach, and there's Mike McDonald's a good coach, and they have good players on that defense. Yeah, they've got good starters. All uh, uh, you know, basically all eleven players are are yeah. good. All eleven starters are good players. Um, you know, we'll see how they are with the injury. Like they had. Their DNPs were Boye Mafe and Byron Murphy on Wednesday. I'm not sure on Thursday. But even like Derek Hall, uh, who was a guy, I think, wasn't he, isn't he from Auburn? And we looked yeah. at him a couple years ago. Um, you know, he's had a solid start to the season with four sacks. And I think uh, Pro Football Reference has, has him listed as eight QB hits, but I think PFF would have that listed as four QB hits um, just since you have the four sacks. So, and I think he even had a nice game on uh, primetime against the Lions, too. So there's some, there's some good names on here. We know old friend Leonard Williams and. We know that secondary is good. Tariq Woolen's having a a solid start to the season too. He's part of that whole crew. That uh, yeah, their corners are awesome. You yeah, know, Woolen's Wool, and this is from Walt WBJ eighty four. I think he's one of four corners in the NFL right now that hasn't allowed a, a pass of over fifteen or twenty yards. So again, you have to take into account the opponents that they played. But results, good results, are good results to start a season and a month into an NFL season. Yeah. Um, but- I, have a, I, had a, I had a question. I had a question to ask you. Shit! 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 Oh. Uh, the tight ends have been uh, zero involvement this year, like net zero, like uh, not just like twenty twenty two, just like uh, and Theo Johnson, you know, a guy that we're so excited to see. Is there any chance tight ends get involved this week? Theo Johnson gets involved this week? Yes, because they're not going to be able to force feed Malik Neighbors. I don't know exactly how that's going to happen, but yeah, I would expect more. And and I talked about this on the mailbag pod on Wednesday, Justin, is I think that's being a little overblown as a tight end involvement. Everyone's like, because last year it was, they had Darren Waller. 2022, through the first four games, Daniel Bellinger had one more target than what Theo Johnson has right now. And again, that was a team that was begging for guys to get targets. Now, the Giants are passing a lot more, right? DJ has the fourth most passing attempts in the NFL. But I think were DJ being accurate on throws of Theo Johnson away from him having like a touchdown and 90 yards on the year, which isn't overwhelming, but... It's a lot different than what a stat line looks of now of like three catches for 45 yards. So, yeah, and again, like I said, on those scramble drills, right, that's where the tight ends can, you know, make make some of their money, right? That's where we can get Theo Johnson out in space at some of those scramble drill throws. So you just, you know, this is to win this game, you're going to have to have some gritty moments, and that's going to be scramble drill type of stuff too. So, yeah, the tight ends will have more involvement in this game, but I view that as, because Malik Neighbors is out and not because we need to get the tight ends more involved. Devin Singletary is 50-50 for this game. So in my brain, uh, Theo Johnson and uh, uh, Tyrone Tracy and maybe even Eric Gray, get ready to run some screens, buddies. Get ready to run some screens. Hey, and they've given up some screens too, right? Like uh, Hunter Henry been, had like a 30-yard screen against We've been good with screens. Them. Yeah, we've been yeah, good with Giants screens. have been good at screens for the first time. Like It feels like forever. Um, maybe so. Ever. So uh, why don't you talk to us about something, Justin? I'll talk to you about something, and that something is Captain Morgan. hey Uh This episode, this game preview is brought to you by Captain Morgan. I did? You did. Oh, you're All doing right. SeatGeek. 
uh, the official Spice Rum sponsor of the NFL. You know, told you. We're having a watch party this Sunday. Downtown Social in NYC. Doors open at 1230. We'll be watching the early slate of games, and it's Captain Morgan's bringing it to you. You, you want to know who to thank for the tickets being free? Captain Morgan. That's why. So say thank you, Captain Morgan. And I know uh, Downtown Social, the bar, they're going to have some fun concoctions of stuff with Captain Morgan drinks, and you're going to have fun with it, and you're going to do it responsibly, or Bobby Skinner's going to throw a bottle at your head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not throwing Cap- t-shirts this year. I'm throwing bottles. <laughs> No, because the Giants, we don't know if the Giants are going to score touchdowns. So we're not throwing T-shirts after touchdowns. Bobby's throwing glass bottles if you're drinking irresponsibly. Visit CaptainMorgan.com to find Captain near you and find Captain with us uh, at Downtown Social this Sunday. Please drink responsibly. Captain Morgan Original Spice Rum, 35% alcohol by volume. Captain Morgan Rum Company in New York, New York. Bobby Skinner, you'll be glad you did. I'm glad you did. This Seahawks offense is very impressive to me. You know, they haven't had that major 30-plus game, 30-plus point game yet, but they're ninth in points per game, fifth in yards, first in passing yards. Like, Geno Smith is dealing right now, right? Like, he's he's playing ball. But really, the main motor of this right now has been DK Metcalf. You know, yep. he's averaging six catches and 90 yards right now. And, like, Geno loves to go to him. Like, just loves to throw. Like, in man coverage, you play man coverage, he's throwing the DK Metcalf. Uh, he, you pressure Geno Smith, he's throwing the DK Metcalf. Like, he's looking for it. And I think this is a big game for Deontay Banks, quote-unquote, at the catch point, right? This has been the issue for Deontay Banks. Well, this is not a great matchup then. Because Geno will rip it into DK Metcalf no matter where you are. Like, I, I, there was, look at the first, go back and watch the first play of the game versus the Lions. And they did this all game, too. And Gino throws that ball to DK. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that's that's an insane throw, and he just doesn't care, right? Like, he'll rip it in there no matter who you are. And if they if you cloud him, right, where you you know play one defender underneath, one high, well then they'll start to you know try and hit in breakers, you know slants and digs. Like they they want to get DK Metcalf as involved as possible. Now I do think the answer is to cloud a little bit because then you know what get like this is a big uh, big game for the linebackers in coverage. That's where you can maybe get some interceptions um, underneath. It's like when them trying to get the ball to DK Metcalf on end breakers, where you physical them up a little bit and then try and get a linebacker or a safety underneath. That's where you can make some plays, and that's where you see the Giants like to rotate their defense. But man, they, there's just there's just no fear in Geno Smith's heart when he's throwing the ball to DK Metcalf. It doesn't matter where he is, and there shouldn't be. Um... And that was one of the reasons why I think Seahawks fans were really excited about the different kind of change is that DK Metcalf had his one of his worst years of his career last year, and now he's having one of the best years of his career. And, and outside of week one, where a little side tangent here, Seattle played Denver, and Je- you know Jets fans are all upset with Garrett Wilson now, and he, he just faced Pat Sertain, and Seahawks played Denver week one, three catches, four targets, 29 yards. Go Pat Sertain, man. But outside of that, weeks two through uh, through four, 10 catches, four catches, seven catches respectively, and 129 yards in week two, and then 104 yards in each of the last two weeks, Bobby Skinner. Yeah, he's been, he's been really good, and he's been playing grown man football too. Um, I'm not, not looking forward to that matchup. Not at yeah, all. And here's the thing, though. Like if, even if you do like really try and shut down DK, they spread the ball around very evenly. Right, like DK, JSN, and Lockett have 36, 33, and 26 targets, right? So they're spreading it out, and their, their tight ends and backs get involved too. And this is where I think Geno is the most dangerous. Is that, and like, unless you could just man up these guys and win, which you're not going to be able to, this is going to be probably more zone based defense. He will whiz that shit past your ear hole as a linebacker. Like, your linebackers, safeties need to have your head on a soil because there's just, there's no fear of him throwing the ball over the middle like he will throw past like he's gonna throw into tight windows he's gonna throw you know past your head like he he will do that but at the same time like that's you know for a Giants team that may be outmatched that is how you win also is get some turnovers on Geno Smith because no fear means opportunities for a defense too so like if this defense has ever had a game where they're gonna get some interceptions this is it right this is it I'm, I'm trying like how many interceptions have the Giants defense had this year um, Darius oh. Moasa? Is that the only one? 
I think that may be the only one. Not none by none by any secondary players yet. Yeah. I don't even think they've gotten their hands on any. It's like, oh, that was a drop. Do no. you remember any? Yeah, no, no, because you know they they haven't gotten any. Um, so like they got to get their hands on the football, right? This is a game where you are outmatched. That's how you win. You win the turnover, uh, battle. And again, they're gonna give you opportunities with JSN. They're all like that's been the biggest change for them is they're gotten him a lot more involved. I think a lot of the DK stuff is similar to last year, um, especially you know when you're pressuring or playing man coverage. They like to get JSN involved in the quick game. I don't think JSN is bringing a ton of juice, but he is doing a solid job. But they'll use him in the quick game, the screen game. Look out for this. If they get into Trip's bunch, JSN's getting the ball. Right? They're basically clearing out space to get JSN either a five, you know, get a little five yard in or, or a five yard out. Um, but that's kind of the way they operate their quick game. With Lockett, it's kind of he just runs the full route tree. Sometimes he gets the ball, sometimes he doesn't. But he's not like. You know he's, but he's plenty. He's plenty involved too. It's just they're spreading the targets around. Here's something that's pretty cool. They don't use play action very much at all, all right? <clears throat> and Geno has like the second lowest play action rate ahead of only ahead of Brock Purdy. A lot of teams will use play action to get chunk plays. So it's like you know you you get under center play action right. They play the run. Now you know defenses are getting back right because they're looking for those crossers and the post route. Not the Seahawks. Like they're they're doing it to create space underneath and get the easy dump offs, right? Like their easy throws actually come off play action. Their tough you know, the tough throws come from the straight drop back. It's very like opposite of a lot of NFL teams right now. Um and like that's the way they create their quick game. So this this is just it's a tough to me it's a it's a very tough offense to attack because they have so many answers. Offensively, we'll talk about the run game too, and they the whole field is available for them, right? On on any play because Geno Smith, the whole field is available for them. So there's no like cutting off of one area because Geno Smith will just go to the next area. All right, well, here's the good news. I think Drew Phillips is going to come back this week, so it'll be fun. It'll just be interesting and fun to see him against a, a good passing offense and a and a slot receiver that gets targeted a decent amount. Jay sends their slot guy, right? They're not putting like right, right. So he, you know he is the low average at the target yards per reception below ten. That's a slot receiver. So Andrew Phillips against JSN, fun, cool. Let's see how Drew Phillips holds up. Adoree Jackson may be back, but Bobby, I'll tell you what. Something that we haven't really talked about because the team's been there's just been so much, so many other things to talk about the team. Cordell Flotts had bad moments over the last two weeks, but Cordell Flotts also had some good moments over the last two weeks. So I. I think there's part of me that wants to see Cordell Flott play over Adoree Jackson, question mark, as this is kind of, as Cordell Flott doesn't seem to always look like a disaster, question mark. It Here's the thing. This isn't the Cowboys receivers, though. The Correct. Cowboys receivers are just flat out bad. And even in that, Flock got picked on on third down a couple times. Now, again, he had a couple uh, pass breakups or forced and completion as well. So there's good... For what we expect out of Cordell Flott, that was you know a good enough game. Um, I, honestly, I, I we haven't seen Adora Jackson play more than a handful of snaps, so it's like I can't yeah. I can't say oh Adora Jackson needs a play over him because we had it's we're heading to week five and he's dealing with an injury still and I haven't seen him play more than a handful of snaps this year. Um, so that's where you are. So Flott probably does get the start this week because he's fully healthy. Um, but I'm not. I don't. I don't let this these last two games make me feel confident because I don't like any of the receivers on the last two teams except for their number ones and Cooper and Lamb, right? And he, he was never he wasn't matched up on those guys at all. Um, and there was opportunities in week three. It's just Deshaun Watson's an awful fucking quarterback. Uh so hey, he can he can make some plays, but uh, you know it's it's not. I'm not. I'm not getting excited over the last two matchups. You know, one of their touchdown drives, they targeted him on third down, and they end up scoring. Uh, yeah, talk to me about their run offense. Quick. Well, I want to talk about their offensive line, too, because it's it is, it's not very good, right? That's another place you could take advantage outside of Charles Cross. Charles Cross had a good season, but got abused by Aiden Hutchinson, so he's well, not. That's Aiden, that's Aiden Hutchinson, in all fairness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Geno's been pretty good avoiding sacks when you lose. Your, like, you got you to gotta play discipline, because if you 
work outside in, well, Gino's going to get outside the pocket and then he's going to make throws. But if you keep him inside the pocket, he's not he's not like a threat with his legs. So just kind of close in that pocket and you can make plays. Um, this is where I can see, this is one issue I've seen with them, is allowing free rushers off the edge. And we know Shane Bone likes the nickel blitz. He did it a lot the last two weeks. They might be prepared for it, but I, this is that is something I would look to install this week. It's like let's let's send some blitzes. We don't have to send five, six, seven man blitzes because Gina will kill you against that. But you know, send Mike McFadden outside the tackle. Send uh, Jason Pennock outside the tackle. Getting some of those looks like think ahead like that. Now the rushing game. This is our third year in a row doing a Seahawks preview pod, Justin. So and that's been all of Kenneth Walker's career. And I've come on these, and I'm like, I don't really like Kenneth Walker that much. He bounces stuff uh, outside the tackles way too often. He doesn't follow his blocks. He creates more negative runs than he should. But he's an explosive. Year? Well, he one, he's having a better year, right? The games with Walker, he, they're averaging 140 rushing yards per game, which is ninth. And again, against two good run defenses, too, in the Jets and the Lions. Or the Broncos and the Lions. One thing they're doing well is they're taking his desire to bounce runs and they're just designing runs outside the tackles. Instead of trying to force him to be the straight zone back, they're <clears throat> they're giving him, like they're playing, they're coaching to his strengths and getting him outside the tackle, right? And that's, you, you look at Chicago's run offense with Shane Waldron, and I'm like, okay, maybe that's why you guys suck too, is you guys don't build around your strengths. Yeah. So the DBs obviously need to be on their shit this week in the run game to where I actually would, like, you know, you talked about Cordell Flock. If Drew Phillips is healthy, I might I might start Nick McLeod at outside corner. Now, I don't think he has the athleticism to, like, run with Kenneth Walker out, I guess, there. But he's going to do a better job taking on blocks um, where Flock can maybe do a little more athletically there. So they're they're getting outside the tackles. Not, obviously, not every run is outside the tackles. But they're playing in the Kenneth Walker strengths. But the desire to bounce the play is st- still very much there. He finds success uh, for, with it, too. But it does, you know, create the negative runs. So you got to take advantage of those things. Justin. I have one more note. One more note. Uh, DK Metcalf versus the Giants the last two years. I just remembered this. Um, DK Metcalf versus the Giants the last two years or less. I know what uh, you're going to say. The, the has, result, has resulted in some of the more viral clips that I've ever put out and, vi- and most viral shorts that I've done. Two years ago against the Dory Jackson, this wasn't anything extravagant. And really, none of these two things were extravagant. It's just it's just kind of like the game within the game. Two years ago, where Kenneth Walker runs for a rushing touchdown in Seattle, uh, DK Metcalf just absolutely fakes the shit out of a Dory Jackson like he's about to catch a fade in the end zone. And a Dory Jackson's playing the receiver while DK Metcalf just runs for a touchdown right, right in front of a Dory Jackson. And then last year, DK Metcalf is like holding Deontay Banks, acting like uh, just like holding him, holding him, holding him, holding him. And then he just breaks off the last second, catches a touchdown at MetLife Stadium. And those two things have been have resulted in hundreds of thousands of views on, on YouTube and Twitter. And well, I hope you have no viral videos after this. Break. I hope I have no viral videos uh, also. But DK Metcalf is known to do that against the Giants. There's also the stiff arm you had versus James Bradbury, which caused a fumble. And um, Smoking Woody DM'd him after that game. Thanks so much to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Baseball season is in full swing. NFL season we, we got to update this, SeatGeek. Uh, football's in full swing. We're in week five. Baseball's in the playoffs. This is the time to be getting tickets. NBA's right around the corner. Basketball's around the corner. Hockey's around the corner. SeatGeek is the, is the best place to buy tickets. They rate every ticket on a scale of 1 to 10, so you know if you're getting a good deal. Look for the green dots. Not on the back of Bobby O'Karake's helmet, but on their app, so you know if you're getting a good deal. Um, and right now... You can use code GIANTS10 for 10% off any tickets on SeatGeek, whether you're a new customer or not. Again, we've read this ad before, uh, guys. If you haven't put it in there, it's a limited time. You can use it anytime, but put the code in now. Uh, and again, and it's not you know your first purchase. Anybody can do it. No matter how many times you bought tickets using SeatGeek before, GIANTS10 is going to get you 10% off your next order. So whip out that phone, open the SeatGeek app, and add code GIANTS10 to your account. What are you waiting for? Do it now, because this offer is only available for a limited time. Code Giants10 for 10% off your next order. You'll be glad you did. Um, That's the end of that. All right, we now welcome on our weatherman, Jolly Oliver. We're doing this a second time because Justin's computer crashed. 
Jolly, what's the weather looking like in Seattle this week? Bobby, I like that you don't hide anything from the audience. Uh, I'll deliver it again. Happy to. In Seattle, normally, rainy place, Pacific Northwest. Not this time. Sunday at 4.30 p.m., partly cloudy, kind of colder temperatures, some fall weather, as you might expect, but the sun's going to peak out. You have a small percentage of rain, but it's going to be mostly a clear day, a clean day for our New York football giants. How about that? How about that? Um, I do want to talk about your Mets for a second, because when people... And I, I, this is why I hate when we screw up because like I can't have the same conversation two times in a row. Um, but when people are listening to this, we either know if the Mets have advanced or lost in the playoffs. And you have a you have a Mets podcast, which is like this is the best time to ever have your your podcast promoted because that's going to be the most listened to episode of the year. Yeah, I mean, we've been going every day, stream highlights and podcast episodes. I'm hoping they win because I'm, I've am i really been enjoying the day-to-day grind of just like show every morning, stream at night, show every morning. Um, so if you're looking for any Mets commentary, fan or not, even if you want to bask in our sadness if we lose, come on down because tomorrow, either way, it's going to be a big app. Oh, what is it called? What's that show called, Jolly? It's called Shea Station. Shea Station. Like the old stadium. Like the old stadium. J Station. Oh, it's, uh, Jerry Blevins is only on that too, right? Yeah, the former lefty reliever, that guy. Yeah, you know, just a former major league player. Tall glass of water, that guy. How tall is he? 6'6". Six, six. Okay, so I got him by an inch. Yeah, you definitely got him. Actually, he went to our height chart and he said, who is this? And I said, it's Bobby. Like, kind of shocked he didn't realize it was you. But apparently you guys have never met. So um, you guys yeah, could have a tall off. I don't think so. But then Carl Anthony Towns, who's also come to New York yeah, recently, he was up there. he's he, I think he passed me. So yeah, damn you. Uh, all right, so we got trivia. What's trip? What do we got for trivia this week? Oh, I'm we so got a lot of Seahawks asked. recent Seahawks matchups to pull from too. I do. I went. I went back a little bit though. Uh, for those who don't know, the trivia standings this year are Bobby with seven points, Justin with five. Most points at the end of the year will receive a Giants jersey of their choosing, courtesy of me. Here is this week's question: In 2010, our New York Football Giants scored a season best 41 points in Seattle against the Seahawks for an easy victory. They improved to six and two after that win. They would finish ten and six in that game. What I found through my fun little research. Three different rushers went for over 50 yards that game, 50 yards on the ground. What are their names? You can submit up to three answers for three points, but if any of your answers are wrong, you'll get zero points. So you guys are going to text me. Text me as many names as you want. Three different running backs had 50 rushing yards or more in this 40-point win over Seattle in 2010. Submit as many names as you okay. want. Okay. Um. I'm sending you three right now. Bold. Fortune favors the bold. Panic, I have your three. Bobby. Uh, you have both. All right. Is it Earth, Wind, Fire? Bobby, oh, Derek, did you, did you Derek, mean to? Go ahead, Justin. Derek Ward was not on the 2010 team. Derek Ward was not on the 2010 team. That was one of the names that Bobby submitted alongside Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw. Bobby, you will get zero points. We were looking for... Danny Ware, who had 66 yes. yards on the ground in that game. That was the third name Panic submitted. And suddenly, Justin Panic leads this Woo! year's trivia standings. He leaps up to eight points. Bobby, you have zero because one of the names you submitted was incorrect. Thrilling. Dude, I'm not going to – I don't even want to say this because you'll use it against me. But, like, that that time frame, I was just like – Fucked up all the time, so it's like I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember <laughs> the Giants' third running back from that time. Oh yeah, DJ Ware, 2011 against the Jets. He runs over Tom Coughlin on the sideline. You think that he tears his ACL? And no, he's fine. He's fine. He's all fine. right. So uh, how about that? All right, let's get into tri- uh, not trivia. Our fantasy draft, where we pick mm. players from our our own team and the team that they're playing. Jolly will be picking first uh, after a 42 point outing. He's 12 points behind me. I had 42.4 points and hold the lead still. Justin uh, Justin is not having a bad year, but he is 27 points back after a 33-point outing. And this is the Malik Neighbors effect. I'm on pace to shatter the highest scoring uh, points per game season. And Jolly, who's not who's 12 points behind me, is on pace for the third highest scoring season. So um, Malik Neighbors effect, but 
is Malik Neighbors going to play, right? Mm. Well, does he go in the first six picks? Does someone get crazy and pick him in the first six picks? We'll see. Jolly, you have the first pick this week. I do. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Last week, I opted for Wandale Robinson over Devin Singletary. That proved to be a very good move. So I'm liking my own personal board. I'm believing in myself. Um, this is a clear one for me. I'm happy to have this one. I will be taking DK Metcalf. I don't know if Neighbors is playing, and I like the connection between him and Geno Smith plus the Giants secondary. Worries me. Give me DK. Would you have taken Malik Neighbors if he was set to play? Yeah, I think I would have, honestly. I really do. I mean, I think you're either you're good either way, uh, but I think just the fact of having a giant go 1-1 one, one and how good Neighbors yeah. has been and the touchdown effect, too, I would have taken him. Yeah, and the Seahawks, like, they could spread it around. The Giants yep. have shown that they're not going to really do that a lot. I'm going to go Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Um, You know, Giants' rush defense has been so-so, had some bad games, had some, you know, two bad games, two good games. Um. But Walker, Walker's is a threat for those explosive plays. Um, and I think they might try and check the ball underneath a little bit. I'm going to go Kenneth Walker with the second pick. Justin, you have back-to-back picks. It's maybe dumb, but I'm going to go Wanda Robinson. No, that's smart. He's, yeah, he's, I don't think that's he dumb. Gets, he gets fed way too many targets. You know, but what, what will Ro- Wanda Robinson's workload look like without Malik neighbors. Cause a lot of attention is probably going to be thrown his way. Is it going to be all manufactured? But luckily we're not playing on half PPR. We're playing on whole PPR. So even if Wondell Robinson has 10 catches for 40 yards, I will take those 10 points. Um, and then give me on the back end. Give me on the back end. You know, should I just grab both guys that get a lot of catches for their team that play in the slot? So I will grab Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, I'm taking low yards per reception guys, but I catch guys because JSN is leading the Seahawks in catches. Mm. I, I like that pick. The, my board has actually went four for four so far. How about that? And so that means it's going to go five for five because I have the next pick. And I'm going to go Darius Slayton. I'm going to talk about Darius. or He may get talked about a little bit later and on this show. He may. So I'm going to go Darius Slayton. Back Jolly, to you have the oppor- wide, Giants, <laughs> back to being Giants wide receiver one. Jolly, you have the opportunity to do the funniest thing. Don't do yeah. it because I have another rant. I had a rant on him Wednesday, and people were like, oh, we dropped the passes. I'm, ju- I'm just saying that I might also talk about Darius Slayton. Oh, saying. no way. Just, that's what that's what I have prepped, so I, I might talk about it. We might have the first double up. We might double up. Who knows? Usually, oh, wow. the, the, usually the rule has been <laughs> I get what I want on this show. Yeah, yeah so. if, I, if I were to have a double up, you would crucify me. Hey, listen, uh, Bobby. For I'm just you, saying I- the rule has usually been like Bobby gets what he wants for the giant factor if he feels strong <laughs> about it. Bobby, I can do my my first my first Danny King Giant Factor of the Year. The fine print. We'll see. All right. Um, so I have two picks here. Correct. Yes. Window. All right. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take Tyler Lockett. Just give me both wide receiver one and wide receiver two on the Seahawks. I feel comfortable with that. Um, Lockett's been around for so long. I know. Uh, I'm thinking about. And I, I I mean he's not the same player he was, but I like I love Lockett was a beast. Him and Russell Wilson's connection was just unreal. I don't know. If, I'm I'm torn between two. Tradable slot, so you could draft someone who might not play. Yeah, I think I might take Singletary here because he might not play. Um, but if he does, I feel like he'll probably be important to the game plan. But also, his he's got butterfingers and he scares me. The and fumbles don't really should... hurt you in fantasy. I though. know, I know. But all right, I'll take Singletary with my third pick. Okay. This is. You know, I'm going to do it. Even though I really don't think he's going to play. Ah, fuck, dude. I don't know no if I way. can do it. No way. No way. You know what? I'm going to take a shot. And maybe this guy gets some catches, too. I'm going to take Tyrone Tracy. Okay. He may be the Giants RB1 on uh, on Sunday. They like to use him in the receiving game regardless. Uh, so I'm going to go Tyrone Tracy. with my. I'd rather do that than pick one of the tight ends. Justin, you got your last two picks. This is not a tradable slot. Yes, it is. Okay, then I will take Malik. Been doing this for three years. I don't know where we are. Um, I never know where I am. Uh, so I yeah, I'll be taking Malik Neighbors here if this is a tradable slot. Um, and then uh, my last pick, Noah Fant, starting tight end for the Seahawks. No, you. Noah Fant. How about that? I'm having a great first round year. pick. The only Iowa tight end to not be good. Um, 
part of the Russell Wilson trade too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So what's the deadline time for that I have on Sunday to since this basically is a when the game? when the hell when the scratches come out. All right, so I'll uh. Uh, uh, but we'll be are... together. Just let you know. We'll if Malik Neighbors is ruled out, we will be talking about that, and I will let you make your trade. Odds Maybe are I'll I will make a trade last sec. I don't know. That doesn't odds matter. are I will make a. I will publish a tweet. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to take their RB two, and I'm going to take Gets a guy fixed. who I'm going to give you a trivia question, Jolly. Okay. Who threw this player's? First college football touchdown. He finished his college career at UCLA. I'm okay. taking Jake Bobo. Jake They're wide receiver four. Who threw his first collegiate touchdown? I'll give you a hint. He's played for the Giants before. Uh, Colt McCoy. Daniel Jones. Damn, I thought it was going to be an outside the box answer. Yeah, that's why I said he played before. I threw you <laughs> off there. Yeah, really. Uh, good. Yeah, his freshman year at Duke was Daniel Jones last year at Duke, and then he transferred to UCLA. Great name. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go Jake Bobo. I actually got a touchdown with him in the touchdown draft last year. Just or Jolly, what's your last pick? Uh, you already know. Do you want to tell what the audience what it is? Is it going to be Jalen Hyatt? I will be selecting Jalen Hyatt with my last pick. Oh. Imagine Jalen Hyatt. Like, so Jalen Hyatt's the smart pick here. But it's just like, I just don't trust it. Like He's, no, like, he's probably going to be a starting wide receiver this week. This is a zero, but it's a tradition pick. I'm trying to establish a brand. I should have How taken Hyatt's. How have you averaged 42 points a week, yet you've taken Jalen Hyatt? Death taxes and Jolly All have taken Jalen Hyatt with the last pick of the fantasy Derek, draft. What do you want? I'm different. Jeez. <laughs> Will Jalen Hyatt register a point this week? No, that's but I think he might get a target this week. And that's but a he's step starting, in the right he, like He's yeah. probably going to start. So he's going to. Yeah. I should I Honestly, it was really stupid of me to pick Bobo over Hyatt. That was really stupid of me. That was a pick for trivia's sake. Yeah, I did that. And that's really fucking dumb when I'm trying to go for the scoring record. Maybe he'll get a touchdown and make me feel better. All right, uh, Giant Factors, where we pick our X Factor of the Week. Jolly, you have the first one. Bobby, I will pivot from all of my notes that I Thank prepped you. for someone specific, because I guarantee that whatever you're going to say is probably more insightful. Yeah, you uh, shouldn't instead, have done this. I'm going to call an audible, and I'll just say Daniel Jones. You know, let's, let's No, have... come on. <laughs> That's even worse. What do you mean? It's Bobby and your show first, guys, all right? Daniel Jones did not throw a passing touchdown last week. Everyone was commending Brian Dable for managing your weaknesses. Show up this week. You're going to be down a weapon. Prove all the people wrong. Block out the noise. Be a giant factor. Yeah, remember this yeah. game last year? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, we're going to need him to like, play really there. good. You have to play really good football for them to win this game this year. You can't this week. You can't just play decent football. You got to play really good football for them to win. People forget that on the drive down in this game last year before the pick six, that was a pretty good drive. <laughs> yeah, people forget it. I actually it. did think about that today. Yeah, uh, it was like a good drive. It's 14 to 3. Drive. Looked like they were going to score, make it a one score game. And then, yeah. Yep. And then Brian Dable threw the tablet at him. Yep. Um, I'm going to go Darius Slayton for my giant factor this week because mm. once again, the Giants are going to be relying on Darius Slayton to be their wide receiver one, most likely. Um, and, you know, I put out that clip for the mailbag part because, again, I, I'm so tired of everyone just wants to move off Darius Slayton. And people take everything out of context because of the drops, right? And if you, if, hey, if you just think because a guy has some drop passes, he has a drop issue, that he's totally useless to your team, then fine. But guess what? He is now your wide receiver one again. I don't care how many catches or targets Wandale Robinson has. He is your he is the better wide receiver. He's one of only five guys that averaged 15 yards per catch since he was been drafted. Shout out Research Rick for the stat. And here's the thing with Darius Slayton. One, one guy gets injured, he's valuable. But as far as like part talking for the future, right? And I didn't bring this up on the mailbag pod, so I'm just adding to the mailbag pod. Is people will take out of context, well, he's wide receiver three. You're going to pay money to wide receiver three? Yes. On the New York Giants, I am. Because guess what wide receiver three is on the New York Giants? A top 10 player on the roster. Literally put together a list and don't bullshit yourself and say, oh, I think, you know, Michael McFadden's better. No, he's not. Darius Slayton's a better player than Michael McFadden, right? Oh, Darius Slayton has a draw problem. Well, Michael McFadden is someone who gets taken off the field on third down. The most important down in football, they take him off the field because of his limitations. And I'm just not meant to shit on McFadden, but it's meant to talk about... Darius Slayton's a top 10 player on this team, a team that has no pending uh, free agents outside of him that are going to get 
anything more than four or five million per year. Darius Slayton should be valued, and once again, he's probably the Giants' wide receiver one in a game. Uh, uh, in a game, shouldn't be their wide receiver one, but he is. So Darius Slayton, be a giant factor. Show, m- remind people who you are now that you don't have Malik Neighbors on the field. Justin, who is your giant factor? I'm gonna go with Cordell Flott. Talked about him in the first half of the show against Dallas. He had, I mean, the numbers aren't good, but I test says he made some good plays and the eye test says he made some bad plays. Um, he's getting targeted a lot these last two weeks, but I think what the Dallas game showed is a little bit of growth. It's like, Hey, well, you know, you're going to allow some catches, but you're also going to make some plays as well. You're going to make some tackles. Um, and those are things that we just haven't seen a ton from Cordell Flott on a consistent basis. These receivers this week, they're not the Dallas Cowboy receivers. It's no washed up Brandon cooks and, Jalen Tolbert or Devontae Turpin. It's Tyler Lockett. it's Devontae up. Turpin. You got that name wrong last week. I've said it wrong every single time that I've said it, and that's how irrelevant he is. These Seahawks receivers are not irrelevant. Cordell Flott, if you're going to be on the outside and you're going to be starting, let's, let's start to show growth. You're 23 years old now. Congratulations. Start to show some growth. Start to show some progress. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're a starter. Maybe we can rely on you. Maybe we cannot. Go out there and be a giant factor. All right, next we have spread picks. But first, what are spread picks brought to us by Jolly? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Bobby. They're brought to us by Chris Gates Fitness, an online fitness monthly membership. Chris Gates is the coach, and he's a massive football sports fan. It's a program and community designed for sports fans. Learn how to make sustainable progress while being in a group that's tons of fun and provides accountability and support in the training camp community. They have challenges every month with prizes awarded like home gym equipment, supplements, free coaching calls, and more. You'll get a ton of support, Q and A's through Chris and the community, learning modules, all the stuff you need to know about proper diet and exercise and hundreds of video tutorials. And best of all, you can use promo code giants to get 80% off the first month. Jeez. Wow, $10 saved. Nice. After the discounted first month, the price will go up to $50 for each subsequent month. There's no long-term commitment. You can sign up and cancel at any time. So head to the link in the description to learn more. 80% off the first month, $10. You'll be glad you did. I'm glad you did. All right, spread picks, man. I, it's gone from like going to bounce back to I'm embarrassed with my performance this year. After a three and five week, I'm at 11 and 21. Whoa. You know, I've been, I've been, spread picks have been a point of pride for me in my life. And this year I'm embarrassed. I, I'm I'm coming humbly this week, so I'm in last place at 11 and 21. Justin also finished three and five. He's 13 and 19. Um, Jolly only only person uh, over 500 last week. He moves up to 16 and 16 with a five and three week. The listeners went four and four, so they are stayed four games up. They're 18 and 14. First game of the week, we got Thursday night football. Bucks at Falcons minus one and a half. The listeners are represented by John Talks Giants. He has his own Giants podcast. Mm. There's a lot of podcast plus. Go check it out. Really appreciate John. He's going Bucks plus two and a half or plus one and a half. I'm also going Bucks plus one and a half. I'm not a big believer in the Falcons, and I think the Bucks defense is going to take advantage of an, uh, a Kirk Cousins who can't move all that well. I'm going Bucks plus one and a half. Jolly, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to go Falcons here. I keep down them a little bit, and I'm not totally sold on them, but a couple nice ones in a row. They've been biting me in the ass. I'll take the Falcons. Justin, who do you got? I don't love this pick because I like the Bucks better as a team. I will be rooting for the Bucks, But I think the Falcons secondary is going to cause some issues for the Bucks offense, and I don't trust the Bucks rushing offense to run the ball well enough. So give me the Falcons, even though I don't like this pick. How about that? All right, Jets at Vikings minus two and a half. What do you have for this one, Justin? Vikings. Uh, I I think Brian Flores is going to put Aaron Rodgers in a very uncomfortable situation. Show cover zero and bring it. Uh, I agree. Like I basically the same reason as Justin just said. I'm not panicked on the Jets, but I just think this is a really bad matchup. I got the Vikings. The listeners got Vikings. Jolly, is it a clean sweep? Yes, it is. I will be taking the Minnesota Vikings. You should be voting for the Jets since you're a Mets fan. Like no, you know, Jets, don't Mets, start. Don't Jets. start with that. You know how much I hear that in my life. Don't start with that. Don't uh, start with that. You live in Florida. You should be a Dolphins fan. Do you it's want interact? Do you want interaction? Tweet that is weird to be anything other than Giants, Yankees, Mets, Jets. 
it's a, it's a very easy way to get interaction. Yeah, I saw Twitter. some discourse like, oh, Peter Parker uh, is definitely a Yankees fan. It's like, I don't know, man. You watch any movie. Peter Parker? Really yeah, the Spider-Man. Paul's Twitter is so weird. I know, Because right? they're arguing like... about <laughs> Spider-Man's <laughs> team. Spider-Man don't give a fuck about baseball. Uh, Ravens at Bengals <laughs> plus two and a half. This feels like the trap game of the week. But I'm going Ravens minus two and a half. Justin, who do you got? Sorry, I, I made myself laugh. I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, Bengals. Yeah? Yes. Oh. Listeners are going Ravens. Who are you going, Jolly? I'm going with the listeners. I'm going Ravens. Smart. Wait, I'm writing things down. I, I That threw me off. Uh, this was the, there's not that many good games this week, game of the week, so I had to put one for the eighth game. Browns at Commanders, minus three and a half. I get to tell my Giants audience that I don't believe in these Commanders. And I'm honestly <laughs> sick, like, I'm sick of everyone being mad at me for not overhyping them. Uh, they have played a bad schedule. I don't think they're that good. I really don't. Uh, I'm going Browns plus three and a half. I think Miles Garrett kills them. Uh, listeners are going Commanders. With that being said, Jolly, who do you got? I got the Browns. I think their defense is going to overwhelm the commanders. And I do agree. I was actually, you keep stealing all my talking points and it's kind of fucked up. Like I had a bunch of Slayton notes. You took them. And then I was going to say the commanders had had a really soft schedule and you took that too. So Browns for me. That's my rant. You could take my job on football today then. Justin, (laughs) who you got? Browns offense is just so doo-doo. I, I I don't disagree with any of your takes about this Browns defense going up against this commander's defense, but the Browns offense is just so lost. So give me the, give me the commanders minus three and a half. Left hand up. Did you see Where that comment on the preview pod? It's like, y'all are going to, uh, y'all are definitely underrating the commanders and they just finished it with left hand up. Uh, Bills at Texans plus one. This is truly a pick em game because I have no idea who mm. to pick. The listeners are going to go Texans. I'm, I'm going to go Bills. I, I think the Bills end up pulling this off in the Stefan Diggs revenge game. Justin, who do you got? I'm also going Bills in the Stefan Diggs revenge game. Bills. Uh, I'm going to submit. Hey, there's only, there's, there's only, uh, there's only, that's another social media engagement post. Talk about how many teams are in New York. Jolly, who do you got? There's only one true team in New York. It's the Bills. Uh, no, I got the Texans in this one, though. Um, okay. The people who are up in the standings pick the Texans. Doesn't make me feel good. Packers at Rams plus three. Another like, eh, not a great slate this week. Five weeks have started. Packers are, our listeners are going Packers. I'm going Packers. Are you guys going Packers? Yes. I'm going Rams. Uh, oh, I hate unle- that. I unless mean. Malik Willis is playing, then I'd go Packers. Undefeated Malik <laughs> Willis. Come on now. No, I got Rams. It's true. Like they just stay committed to running the ball. They were the number one rushing team, and then last week they doing like their run pass ratio first drive five to five touchdown, and then they got completely away from it. Frustrating. Uh, Cowboys at Steelers minus two and a half, which you know, so you got the two big fan bases. Sunday night football. Cowboys are just not that good, but the Steelers are are not a good offense, but they're a better team than the Cowboys probably. Justin, who you got in this? I have the Steelers, even though this could easily be the game run. National television, they shit the bed. And then I will never forgive them ever again. Maybe the Steelers. Listeners are going Steelers. I'm going Steelers. Jolly, who do you got? Uh, I'm going Steelers as well. Get ready for the Cowboys to cover and win. Saints at Chiefs, minus five and a half. The listeners are rounding out their picks with the Chiefs. Jolly, who do you got? Saints will cover. Justin. It's pretty, yeah, this is pretty easy. I think the Saints are going to cover, but the Chiefs are going to win uh, because that's what the Chiefs do. They allow teams to play close. I'm actually shocked that Vegas is like, this is such a, an insane line for a team that has had four close games all year long. And a really good Saints defense, too. Like, I, this is this is a like a legitimately really good defense. It's an offense that's capable of putting up some points. Um, so, yeah, I'm going Saints plus five and a half. As well. All right. Giants, Seahawks, and Seattle score predictions. Jolly Olive. And predict will the Mets win or lose? And people will know when they listen to this. Perfect. Go check out Shea Station as soon as this is over. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, Mets will win tonight, so I'll get to watch a Mets playoff game and a Giants game on the same day for the first time 
in my life, maybe, maybe, or at least in the last like 10 years. Um, yeah, Giants going to Seattle. Life. No, it's definitely not my life. That was an exaggeration. Uh, Malik Neighbors surprises everyone, uh, plays on Sunday, and the Giants come out with a defensive front that impresses some people, and they win this game 21 to 15. 21 to 15. Justin, what do you got? Giants lose uh, 27 to um, 13. This was the game where the wheels fell off last year. And this could be it where the Giants fall to one and four. The Seahawks, like the Seahawks can win in a blowout in this game. Um, that being said, man, stay alive. Give us a surprise victory, right? Seattle was that in 2020, right? It gave us some, uh, you know, copium or hopium, excuse me. <laughs> uh, so be that, be that once again. And here's something. This is the third time I played Geno Smith. Save me with your logic. I hate Geno Smith. I don't care that he didn't decide to bench uh, Eli Manning. I hate what he represents, which was the benching mm -hmm. of Eli Manning, which is the most mad I've ever been as a sports fan was that benching. Whoa, 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 what about the future? I don't care. That's my football hero. You benched him. I hate any. I hate everyone involved in that. Everyone involved in that. So please be Geno Smith. Giants 77, Seahawks 0. We appreciate you. We'll see you Monday. We'll see you Monday, that's for sure. Until then, let's go Big Blue.